So continuing with our conversation about decimal operations, we're going to stick with addition, but we're going to spend today talking about numbers, decimal numbers that have different signs that we're adding. So everything that we talked about yesterday in terms of using the scoreboard still applies, but we're just going to use that scoreboard a little bit differently today. If you recall from when we added numbers with different signs that were integers, then we wound up with numbers on different sides of the scoreboard. And we circled the sign on the scoreboard of the number with the, as we said, quote unquote, bigger value. And then we found the difference of those numbers to come up with our answer. So we can expect to be doing the same thing with our scoreboard with these decimal numbers today. Now, don't forget also that we have to take into consideration that we have decimal numbers, so we also have to line up uh, the decimal points of these numbers, as we talked about in yesterday's lesson, to account for the value of the digits, uh, specifically to with regards to place value. So let's get started. This should be pretty straightforward. Oh, and actually, what we're going to do today, instead of checking our answer with estimation, we're going to get a sense of what we should have for an answer with estimation on the front end. So let's actually start with that. So if we were to estimate negative 9.5, well, don't forget 0.5 means we round up. So that's getting us further away from zero. That would be negative 10. And we're adding to that 13.125. That's going to be rounded down to 13. Now, if I had to use my scoreboard to do that, 10 would be on the left hand side, 13 would be on the right because 10 is negative, 13 is positive, and this is the way that we're going to actually deal with solving the problem with the actual numbers. My bigger number is the 13, and now I'll just find the difference in that. So we're looking at an answer that's in the ballpark of positive 3. So now let's actually set the problem up and see if we get something that's in that ballpark. So I have my negative side and my positive side. 9.5 is my negative. 13.125 is my positive. And we can see right away that our answer is most definitely going to be a positive answer. We can also see from the scoreboard because the numbers are on opposite sides, we are going to have to subtract. So when we subtract, we always want to do it with the number that has the larger value, and I really mean that by the larger absolute value. Uh, make that the number that's on top and put the number with the smaller absolute value on the bottom. So we're going to do 13.125, and we're going to subtract from that 9.5. Now, I don't, now this again, is where we can make use of those zeros to make each number the same length. And the only thing that's going to be different today is we're going to not add the columns, but we're going to subtract the columns of the, of the digits. So let's see, 5 minus 0 is 5. 2 minus 0 is 2. Now, you notice we run into a problem when we get to 1 minus 5. We don't have enough. So as we should all know, we're going to borrow from the 3 and make that a 2 and carry the 1 over. So now we're not going to see it as 1 minus 5. Instead, 11 minus 5 is going to give us 6. Don't forget to carry that decimal point down. And now we have a problem again. We can't do 2 minus 9, so we're going to borrow. But you should recognize that the borrowing in this case is really just a matter of seeing the 12 that we have there. But some folks like to draw, like to cancel the one, make it a zero, actually borrow. And now we're ready to do 12 minus nine, which is three. Now our actual answer is 3.625. Our estimated answer is three. Now remember we rounded, so we're not gonna get an exact hit, but I'd say that we are definitely in the ballpark. So that should be, a good answer for us to be comfortable with. So let's do another one. So we once again have numbers that are opposite signs. 
So I have my negative, I have my positive, I have negative 45.25, I have negative 113.875. I can once again see that my bigger number is going to be positive, so that's just by chance, but that's going to be our answer after we subtract. So we're going to, and I'm going to make life a little bit easier myself. I'm just going to bring that number over since it's a smaller number. I'm going to put it underneath, being mindful to stack my decimal points. I'm going to put that extra zero in there as a placeholder. And now I'm going to subtract down. And since I haven't already done estimation to see what a reasonable answer is, we'll use estimation to check our answer at the end. So we can do five minus zero in my thousands place is five. Seven minus five in my hundreds place is two. Eight minus two in my tenths place is six. Drop down the decimal point so we don't forget. All right, now we run into a problem where we have to borrow. So we can't do three minus five. So we'll borrow from the one, drop it down to a zero. And now we're going to have 13 minus five which gives us eight. And once again, we can't do zero minus four, but you could see that should really turn into 10. You can either cancel or just know that that means 10 minus four, which is going to give us six. So 68.625 should be the answer we're looking for. So let's take a look by estimating. So an estimate, would be 113.875. Are we going to round that? Are we rounding up or are we rounding down? Well, that's more than a half, so we're going to round up 113. It's still plus. Negative 45.25. That's less than four, negative 45 and a half, so we're going to round down. Now, I'm not confident in doing this in my head, so I'm going to do my own little scoreboard over here as well. There's a minus, there's a plus, there's my 45 and my 113. I look at the two numbers. I can see that the 113 is bigger, and then I'm going to subtract the 45 from that. When I check that now, I can clearly see I'll need to borrow. So I'm going to borrow, and that's going to become a zero, which brings the one over, 13 minus five is eight. The 10 that I have minus four is 68, so we should be in the ballpark of about 68. And we are in the ballpark of 68. So we can have confidence in that answer. So remember, as we're going through these problems, we're using the scoreboard to our advantage, where we are adding, we're putting the numbers in different columns, we'll ultimately find the difference in those numbers. And we'll make sure that we use the sign of the bigger number in our final answer. So we'll do one more problem, a word problem. Set it up with the scoreboard. Again, I want you to write an algebraic expression. Let's use addition, using addition, which means that we might need to account for numbers as negative in this problem. And then we'll actually solve the problem from there. So it says your gross pay is the amount you make for a job before taxes are taken out. So when you work for a job, ultimately taxes are taken out, but the gross pay is before those taxes are subtracted. The gross pay you received last week for a job was $123.75. That's actual money in your pocket. So that should be understood to be a positive number. Taxes in the amount of $33.41 were deducted. Now deducted means subtracted. That means subtracted. So that's going to be a negative number from your paycheck. How much was your check after, after the deductions? So if we think about that as an expression, as an algebraic expression, but using addition, we know we started with 123.75. We would normally think of just subtracting the 3341, but I'm going to force us to write it as plus, which means we're going to say plus negative. 33.41. And that's exactly what we'd be looking at if we did just write it instead as 123.75 minus 33.41, because we'd probably want to use keep change opposite and convert to addition. 
So now that we have the problem set up, we can use our keep change opposite. I'm sorry, we can use our scoreboard and we can set up the problem. So the 123.75 is our positive number on the right. Our 33.41 is our negative on the left. And once again, it looks like our answer is going to be a positive answer. Now, had I designed this worksheet better, I probably would have made sure that at least in one example, we got a negative answer. So I don't want you to think that because that's the trend on this worksheet, all we're ever going to get is positive answers. What I do know is because my answer is positive and the numbers are on different sides of the scoreboard, I will have to find the difference of these, but keeping in mind that I'm going to do the bigger number minus the smaller number. So my answer is going to be based on 123.75 minus 33.41. Now notice these numbers are the same length. I don't need to add any fill of zero. So I'm just ready to subtract down from there, borrowing if I need to. So five minus one in the hundredths place is four. Seven minus four in the tenths place is three. Don't forget your decimal point. Three minus three, zero. And here I can't do two minus three. So if I borrow, that's just going to turn the one and I'll, I'll show it to you. That's just gonna drop the one to a zero. That's just going to drop the one to a zero, which is just going to cause the one to carry over and turn that two into a 12. So 12 minus three is nine. So 12 minus three is nine. So it looks like what you should expect to take home after taxes is $90.31. Well, just to be sure, let's do an estimate, an estimated check. So 33.41, how are we going to round that, up or down? Think about it, is it more or less than 33 and a half? It's less. So that's going to become 33. But remember, it's negative. 123 and 75 cents, $123.75 or 123.75 is going to round how? Up or down? So you should be saying up because it's more than a half. So that's going to go up to 124. So when I do my check, I'll have the 124 on the positive. I'll have the 33 on the negative. Once again, I know my answer is positive. That's the bigger number. And just to save space, I'm going to just bring the 33 over and subtract it. Let's see. 4 minus 1 in the ones place. I'm sorry, 4 minus 3 is 1 in the ones place. We know that's a 12. We already talked about that from borrowing with the actual numbers. 12 minus 3 is nine. So we're in the ballpark of $91 and we are safely in that range. So that's our correct answer, $90.31. So once again, we're, we're realizing that everything we've seen before is just being used again, but just with slightly more complicated numbers. We're getting away from integers, we're getting into decimals. The scoreboard does not change uh, in terms of being a tool we can use. And lining up the decimals does not change just because we're adding a positive and a negative, which is essentially is finding the difference in those numbers. So just remember those basic rules and you should be in a good place for solving the problems you'll see on the back. So finish up those problems with the strategies we talked about and we'll check in tomorrow.